Hello, class. My name is Kevin, and my company and topic of choice will be on Amazon. And I will be focusing on the unethical conditions of the employees who work in the warehouse environments. And I will cover their COVID-19 current pandemic issues as well that have affected their health and safety. So Amazon is an American multinational technology company founded by Jeff Bezos on July 5th, 1994. The company is focused on e-commerce, Amazon.com, cloud computing, Amazon Web Services, digital streaming, Amazon Prime Video, and artificial intelligence, Alexa. It is one of the biggest five companies in the United States information technology industry among Google, Apple, Facebook, and Microsoft. It has about a million or 168,000 employees in the U.S. alone and has a big, the highest employee turnover rate of 150% a year compared to most businesses that have an employee turnover rate of 12% to 20% and 10% being considered good. Despite all the success, there are also negative aspects to their sustainability and ethical methods of handling and keeping their employees working in their warehouses and work environment. The word culture environment solutions for the warehouse's sustainability structure will be covered since they are on the brink of collapse anytime soon. They're having to fire and hire a lot of thousands of employees every month and losing more than half because of their work conditions and environment they face daily in the warehouses. Amazon has a very positive and home brand name to it, just like Walmart, TJ Maxx, and any other random retail store since we have been formalized with the e-commerce giant as a regular store. But that is only online, but the thing is that the online company we think about as a regular retailer store is having trouble keeping its image in a positive way among its employees and future youth employees. Amazon dominates 49% of the e-commerce market in the U.S. alone and has roughly 110 plus warehouses in the U.S. In recent years, Amazon has had a long history of treating workers poorly workplace retaliation, overtime violations, workplace discrimination, and invasion of privacy in their warehouses. On Twitter, there's a viral uh, Twitter thread that has Amazon employees sharing their stories about their poor work environment doing the hashtag do, hashtag do not shop on Amazon, hashtag support retailers, and hashtag I'm not a robot. Common hashtags to get the word out on how their employees are really being treated in the warehouses. Uh, one tweet also said, or stated, listen, Prime Week was um, really horrible. I went into work at 6.30 p.m. today and then they told us at 12.30 a.m. we weren't leaving until 7 a.m. the next day. My knees were literally locked up and I left. Another tweeted, I worked for Amazon temporarily for a short while when I was 18. And I can confirm that was one of the worst experiences of my life. That company is literally modern day slavery. Some have expressed that social media is a tool to alert others of what really goes down behind the Amazon warehouses. But it's no use since most claims are not backed up with actual evidence of proof and people need to work. Um, there are a lot of social media outlets that are created to ban many ex-employees of Amazon and they propose solutions for the harsh work environments and for the most part some are ignored or deleted from its spending. Um, furthermore, a typical Amazon warehouse worker's salary is $16 per hour. Um, some can range from $6 to $45 per hour. The worker's salary report is based on the 2,381 Amazon warehouse worker salary. In recent events, there have been many lawsuits for employee compensation, protests in front of warehouses stopping the workflow, offices of HR where they don't help or listen to employee requests for a better change within the company structure, and current employees wanting to unionize the warehouse sector of Amazon's backbone. The integration of robots and humans is a very complex problem to solve since humans are not as fast as a robot. Uh, some workers in the warehouses have been injured from a crash with a moving tower or, or overload of weights coming down on a worker. Some workers have had hand cramps from tagging and standing for more than 30 items in a span of five minutes nonstop. In 2020, a study from the Strategic Organization Center found that out of 100 Amazon warehouse workers, there were 5.9 serious injuries, which is 80% higher than any other non-Amazon warehouses. In 2019 to 2020, over 129 DSPs filed injury records to OSHA that were more than 6,000 workers according to an OSHA study being done since injury rates in Amazon's warehouse were so high. Apart from the physical labor, most warehouse workers get injured from doing the mental pressure of getting orders out on time for shipping to run smoothly daily. It's very stressful and it's why most workers get injured on the job site. So moreover, uh, working in the Amazon warehouses, there's a system in place that keeps every worker in check. And if the system isn't being met with the right amount of productivity on how much each worker needs to meet per shift, 
they get a warning that can potentially lead them to getting fired for being lazy and not being productive, quote unquote. Um, Amazon tracks the number of time off tasks workers log each day as a measure of productivity. Um, every worker is expected to meet a goal on their shift to reach, and if not obtained, they get a warning um, first by getting marked down by the internal system that will log it out as TOT. And then a supervisor um, is watching the worker as a second warning. The last warning is a write-up and get fired with having two options and not all workers know of those. You can either leave the company and get a 2000 to 5000 check to never return to any job opportunities within the Amazon company, but you need at least one or two years working there full time or leave without the pay and have the opportunity to return in the future. Um, an example of a rigorous work environment, a worker was faced uh, while working for three days, she could only manage. She stated that she had been warned by her supervisors that it would be physically demanding. She'd be on her feet for 12 hour shifts, walking a total of 15 and 20 miles through a 25 acre warehouse, as long as seven New York blocks, uh, looking for merchandise to fulfill online orders. Uh, just like ex-employees are having bad experiences and regret working at the Amazon warehouses, there's a solution to their bad practices and help workers' um, morale grow into a positive work environment. So the environmental, social, and governance mutual funds that include nine of the biggest uh, were able to top the standard and pours 500 index back in 2019 and went into early 2020. Since Amazon is the largest holding, it can be found in almost all ESG funds around the world. Sustainable investors may look at this and wonder if Amazon is the sustainable investment they want to make because of serious ESG, which is environmental, social, and governance issues that arise with the company. Wages and working condition is something to look at here. Amazon has faced class action lawsuits on wages and working conditions. There have been strikes from Amazon warehouse workers in countries such as Poland, Germany, Spain, and Italy. Warehouse workers are being paid barely above the U.S. poverty lines, and employees have been forced through intrusive systems of surveillance to monitor employees. They're also being pressured to hit targets that are obtained but are underpaid. And these reports have been proving Amazon's lack of trustful labor practices in the country. Um, so Amazon warehouse workers have little alternatives to lawsuits and strikes. Amazon does fall at risk of continuing its high turnover due to long hours, overwork, and stress, illnesses, and the current pandemic. Amazon should be keen into improving their warehouse environments. According to the Medium article written by Sajja Besley, when the pandemic began back in March of 2020, over 10,000 new employees were hired. The sustainable practice of hiring those in need of employment helped Amazon succeed in the pandemic as they also increased their hourly wages for new and existing workers and supply chain and all other operations. However, it has been reported that Amazon did not prioritize the safety of their employees throughout the pandemic as workers became ill with COVID. Also, operations were not shut down and workers were not in quarantine and the spread of COVID became abrupt. Um, I will now be talking about the warehouse environments and how the COVID-19 pandemic currently affects them. Um, workers have stated, it's like I'm risking my life for a dollar, says an employee according to Box Rico. And since the pandemic started in March, uh, this prompted an unprecedented series of internal scandals, employee protests and public relations that have united, or public petitions that have united some of Amazon's corporate and warehouse employees against their employer for the first time. In turn, this unrest has attracted scrutiny from top politicians over the company's labor practices and threats to harm Amazon's reputation in the eyes of the hundreds of millions of people who shop on the platform every year. It also reveals inequalities in the economy that Amazon has flourished in an economy that the e-commerce giant is also shaping as its size and influence expand. In interviews with Recode, dozens of current and former Amazon employees from the warehouse level to senior corporate managers shared previously unreported details about the inner workings of the company. And consistent enforcement of health and safety, pro safety protocols and the tactics they say the company has employed to tamp down tensions rising among its workforce. The warehouse fulfillment centers do offer some safety precautions, such as providing masks and hand sanitizer stations, but these measures are not enough as employees are being forced to work even if they come in contact with someone infected with COVID. Amazon is not publicly sharing the number of COVID cases that continue to rise in the warehouses, and several facilities, such as the Indiana location, are confirming weekly cases of over 1,600. According to recent reports found on Amazon's COVID cases, nine people at the Indiana warehouse facility have died of the infection. And management is not being weary of informing employees, and this is leading to internal scandals that management is hiding from staff and teams. 
During the rising cases of the pandemic, over 3.5 billion packages were delivered in the year 2020, or million, sorry. Um, cases became fatal, and Amazon began to ignore the safety of its employees, leading to protests. And one of them was led by Christian Smalls, who, was, who wanted unionization for his warehouse, but was terminated due to the company disagreeing with views and said he was disobeying social distancing rules by protesting. Many employees became astonished and joined him in fighting back for the safety and precautions of employees. Uh, with actions not being considered and the company valuing their revenue over the safety and precaution of its warehouse employees, Amazon facility workers became known as heroes for their efforts in complying with the two-day shipping method, prime consumer usage, and working at heavy pace environments. It was also reported that warehouse air filters in several locations were not properly cleaned. Therefore, it filtered dirty air into the employees' environments, causing difficulty in breathing, and the mass regulations employees must follow. Harm to the employees' lungs is an issue that is continuing to be reported and is currently rising. So there's a solution to Amazon sustainability structure in their warehouses. And the fact is that it's very simple and it does not need a lot of money for more infrastructure nor downsides within the company. Uh, there are five things that would really change the management or change within management, HR, uh, workers, how Amazon builds their warehouses and understand the ethical values of their employees. The first would be to eliminate the tracking and warning systems in place in all the assembly lines because they're, they are the number one reason why I'm, um, Amazon employees get injured physically from rushing to their objective done on time and mentally has a negative toll on how their minds and bodies feel at the end of every shift, which leads to having them quit in such a very short time. Uh, second would be to retrain the management staff since they too don't really have mercy or hear out the workers on their needs and wants. Um, this slows productivity because workers do protest and stop the whole supply chain from advancing at all in the delay time. Uh, third would be a challenge since it is having to retrain the HR department. They are split from management since HR deals with individuals and do more than what management does as they do more supervising work for the most part. If the HR department would create team building activities to create a refreshing work environment and culture, they can help workers be more positive about working at the warehouse and have less complaints, lawsuits, bad media, press and high employee turnover rates in the country. Fourth would be to restructure the way Amazon warehouses are built. This step has two parts to it. Have a daycare center in most warehouses so that workers with children can take them to work and increase productivity and have long lasting workers in the company. Uh, there are nearly 2,000 employees in Amazon who have little children from ages of one to five years old that would really benefit having affordable childcare. Uh, there would be more breakout rooms near workers and a built in cafeteria system that provides um, healthy food options at a very cheap price so that the workers can work efficiently and effectively, not areas of the warehouses. Next would be to add full health, dental, vision, life insurance, and paid time off if, if injured on the job site for a week, if out longer. This is doable since Amazon on average made in 2020 232.9 billion in revenue and net profited 10.1 billion in just a single year. Amazon has also not paid federal, federal taxes for over two years, which adds even more money to add programs that would benefit both Amazon and workers in the long run. If Amazon would make our programs and benefits with their own money uh, they will get more tax deductions and retain workers longer, which is overall their whole beating heart to move on. Uh, if they lose thousands of workers than what they can hire, they will soon auto destroy themselves and not survive a crash of worker shortage since they are very enormous in the country. Um, so lastly, in the conclusion would be um, to follow their goal of flipping high turnover and making ethical decisions for their employees. Um, in the end, this is only a solution to Amazon's warehouse sustainability issues and ethical values for the employees. If they don't act fast, they can see the negative outcomes soon. Unless they fully autonomize their whole supply chain, then they don't have anything to worry about. But in the meantime, helping their workers overall will help them retain workers, keep a positive work environment, and be more prosperous for years to come, and continue to be successful within the next few years. And then I have some references um, that really pinpointed a bunch of research in regards to Amazon warehouses environments sustainability. And yeah, thank you so much.